So we're going to go over Sound Easy, Sound Easy Lab. We're going to use a laptop with a Realtek IC sound card and use that to do our measurements using Sound Easy, Sound Easy Lab. And um, I've been using Sound Easy forever. I've been building speakers since I was a teenager, I guess. So. It came out initially, well, my first version was on diskettes, and then, you know, we migrated to uh, CDs. Here's an old program by Bill Waslow, you know, the old Connolly Sound Lab. Um, so, yeah, if you have a real tech speakers and microphone on your motherboard, you, you can probably get away with doing this. Um, as you can see, I have some stuff open here already, so I'm going to close this to start over. And first thing you want to do, if you have your power settings on your laptop on power save mode, you want to turn that to turn power save mode off. Do not have that on. It just brings everything to a crawl. And so let's start up sound easy here. You go into your file preferences and we got the Realtek microphone and speaker selected here. Um, I made the pixels on the uh, graphing to three pixels. One is just too small for you guys to see, you know, with the cameras. We're going to select the system from 10 hertz to 100k and we're going to, um, it's really 96k, so 96k we can, we need a sample rate of 192k. Um, you want to set this to you control the mixer and uh, I don't know about this invert channel looks like we need to invert this channel for the microphone when you connect the microphone up but we'll see so go into easy lab measurement system and you're going to get this window. I'm just going to resize that. So you do need to go into R. I already have sound settings open here. I'm going to close this up here. So go into sound settings. Device properties. The sample rate here see um, we can go all the way up to 24 bit 192 but uh, I didn't see 24 bit working I think the microphone the microphone does not do 24 bit the microphone does 16 bit 192 so we're going to set it to 16 192 and we can click on test and we got sound out of there so it works and we got to go back and set the same thing for our microphone Click on. It's already set to two channels, 16-bit. I, I've just done, I just did this. That's why. Um, so 192 here, and we're going to leave this open. The microphone level is set to 30, and the boost is set to plus 30. I'm going to close this. So by the way, I was I thought maybe I needed to. I couldn't figure out why my microphone worked when I didn't switch my battery-powered microphone on. It's because I measured 2.2 volts coming out of the microphone, DC coming out of the microphone uh, on my laptop over here. So, um, so we got here, I got a DIY microphone where I use this 9 volt battery to power my Panasonic capsule here. Right? And um, I use a switch to turn it off and on. But for some reason, it worked without with the switch in the off position. So that's what led me to measure if I got DC coming out out of my motherboard's microphone. And it's 2.2 volts. It's not it's not high, but it seemed to work. 
So that's what we're going to measure. We're going to measure this speaker here. This thing I threw together, you know, it's got, you know, I think a one inch dome tweeter with a phase plug right in the front there and an eight inch woofer and a slanted front panel box. So I'm going to, for now, I'm going to uncheck this use calibration file. I already have a calibration file saved. So we're going to go to 262 or is that the yeah 262k for the MLS length maximum length sequence length here sampling is already it, this should match what you have your sound card set to you know if yours is 96 have a 96 or 48 48 we set it for 192k so we can go all the way we should see a plot all the way out to 96k um we don't need to save this clip here so come down to the measurement the group of measurements uh, buttons here and so if we take a so right now I have let me so I have my line out going to my preamplifier here and that line out is going to this amplifier which powers the speaker and then I have two probes with these banana plugs on the back this is the line in coming in here you know at signal level and this is speaker level coming out here so we have the two probes on there coming into the the motherboard Realtek sound card microphone microphone inputs the left side I believe is the uh, the left side is going to be the reference side and the right side is going to be the input side. And you do need a voltage divider resistors because you don't want any, any more than two volts coming into your sound card. Um, it's, this stuff is in the manual. Um, so I'll point it out to you in the manual here. So. Yeah, here's a picture of the the probes that you need. You know, voltage divider. You know, choose your connector here. Yeah, I have that set up right here. Um, <clears throat> this is like my fixture box where I got capacitors when I'm measuring tweeters, you know, to keep the base out of it. And I have a resistor in here when I'm measuring impedance. I can switch those in and out with these switches. You know, one side I put the sound card on, the other side I put the amp on. So we're going to go ahead and measure that speaker box there. So if I come in here and run MLS, maximum one sequence. So, yeah, we have the mic connected already. So I already disconnected the mic. That's why we got a... Um, a measurement here. But as you can see, um, you're looking at the reference, this top plot. The peak is down at the bottom, not... Uh, pointing up so the polarity is wrong so I need to come in here and invert the reference channel come back to measurement system we're going to rerun this guy So now we have the big peak at the top, um, similar to the input side, I guess. So as a check, <coughs> we're going to connect, we're going to disconnect the mic and put the both channels on the same
so we're gonna the the two probes are gonna be on this measuring the same noise here. So we're just checking if we got a polarity problem. So we got a straight line coming out of there and uh looks okay. <laughs> Now we're going to connect our mic back up. And clear this. And uh, if we were to leave this marker here at zero, we'd be measuring from the time the sound leaves the speaker and travels here and the sound reaches the microphone when it gets at a distance of 71.8467 centimeters away. So we're going to cancel the time flight from the time it leaves the speaker to the mic. <clears throat> and you can also window this thing. Um, it's set to 30,000 as default. Let's set it to some low number. And this this shows you the window in here where it's going to filter out you know a lot of the acoustical stuff. But you filter too much then you lose a lot of data. We're not going to filter that much. Just showing you for example for it to do something on the screen. Let's set that back to thirty thousand. And we're going to do a plot. Right, so that's the frequency response you're looking at of the speaker we that I mentioned to you all going all the way out to 96k here is this here is 20k so you're not your ears are not going to hear beyond this you know and if there's a big null at 30k that null I'm suspecting is just due to the the speaker has a phase plug on it see that triangle that's a it's like centered right in the middle of that tweeter to, uh, you know, disperse to high frequencies. So I'm thinking that's what that phase plug does. But it's it's beyond hearing, you know, beyond you detecting this null here. The one thing we're not accounting for is our microphone correction. So to do that... I didn't show you the part where I played around with these levels. So my, my microphone is set to 30 and my microphone boost is set to 30. So you know, we're lack of time. We're skip that. So you want to come in here and uh, go to import. Import your sound pressure level. And we're going to I have a microphone correction file that uh, I had for so long now, no, too long now. My DIY Panasonic microphone capsule. So here's the raw uh, file here with the raw frequency response. You can click open, and we're going to set this to include the three columns. And there are no there are no headers, so we're not going to erase any header lines here. And we're going to this is set to the efficiency is set to 90. We're going to click amplitude. You're looking at the data points of the file. It doesn't have anything beyond 48K. That's why this, from 48 to 96, there's nothing there. So to make it 750, we can hit repair amplitude. And it plots amplitude versus phase. But we got to do something about this discontinuity here. It's not going all the way out to 96. Go. We come in here and we can recreate it using the Hilbert Bode transform. <clears throat> so we're going to plot our amplitude, you know, sound pressure level, the reference that is, and we're going to say at 18, uh, 47k, it's the 18 dB per octave slope, and then we're going to say at 10k, it's a 0 dB slope. 10k is basically the end of the, the end of the plot. And we click amplitude, and there's our the black line now is our amplitude that we're going to use for the corrected file, and we're going to click phase and this here is the phase line you know change in amplitude means a change in phase so 
is a corresponding amplitude with a minimum phase. Now that we have that plotted there, we just need to go in here and click um, export sound pressure level phase. And I've done this before. We already have a file saved called corrected Panasonic MyCal. We're going to save that. And we're going to come back to the measurement system. And I'm going to say, I'm going to choose the CalMic file, the same file I just exported. Corrected Mike Cal file. And we can, if you sh click on Show Cal File, we don't have it selected. Use use it and Show Cal File. It'll show you what's what Cal file you're using. So that's our microphone mic um, correction there. It's all digital. You know, the the, the sampling of the uh, motherboard sound card is digital. So it's not. If you had an analog preamp, you you know you may want to. Do the same thing for the preamp. So I'm going to come back to my sound pressure level here, and this time I'm going to we have the calibration file selected, and we're going to say to use it, and we're going to plot, replot the same plot. And you see this time, starting near 6k, and he also this uh, between 2 and 3k, we got some correction here, right? And that steep roll off is is also corrected, so it's not as steep as I you know initially thought. It's more like um, I don't know 60 dB. You know, not counting these nulls here, so just a null here and a null there. This null is at again it's at 30 k, which is this here is that point in this vicinity here is. As you move your mouse, it'll tell you here what the you know. 18.8209 hertz, you know. So anything beyond this point, you, you're you not hearing anyway. So, but phase-wise, you know, you, you get to see what's going on, amplitude and phase-wise. Um, so if you wanted to clean up the low frequency response, we just move the mic in closer and, you know, we can piece together a frequency response here. Because um, we got we we have the mic acoustically, you know, almost you know three quarters of a meter away, and you know um, this dining room that I'm in right now. My dining room is pretty much you know it's got stuff bouncing around the room. So there's all kinds of things you can do with sound these. It's it's good to read the manual, learn a lot. Um, it's always being updated. I mean, I can't tell you how many speaker um, development system have you know either fell by the wayside or just cost too much. This this guy here is um, you know he reads all the uh, journals and implements all the latest stuff. So um, I'm gonna make another video, but this time I'm, I'm, I, may, I may make a second video using um, my brand new mic. I got a, a Earthworks. M50 microphone I'm going to use. Anyhow, ta-ta.